So my speech is called The Naked Environmentalist, and I'm wearing clothes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> now, I need you guys to help me out. I need your input, your data, before my speech gets started. So I need to ask you, in the last 24 hours, who has posted or retweeted or shared any content online? And get, get them up. Okay, great. It's most of you. So we're all kind of using social media. My second question is, can anyone here remember buying something that they didn't really want, that they didn't really need, and they couldn't really afford? Can anyone remember doing that? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so most of us buy stuff. And my third question, and this is an easy one. Who here has sex? Get the hands up. You not necessarily have sex with each other, but just in general, <laughs> occasionally, who here has sex? Okay. Proud. Excellent. So, social media, stuff, and sex. One of those things is going to kill us. It's okay, it's not sex. <laughs> And two of those things could save the world. Now, I'm an environmentalist. I'm interested in the big picture. I'm interested in the macroeconomics of how we completely change our system to one that isn't going to destroy our biosphere, destroy our planet. And to do that, to work that system out, the biggest idea I can have to work that system out, I have to start with sex. Because sex is important. Sex is particularly important to human beings because unlike all of the other mammals, us, notably us women, and the great apes, the other great apes, we don't go into estrus. Now, estrus is going into heat. The, all the rest of the mammals, from rats to donkeys to elephants, they only are available for sex in occasional periods of heat. It's the only time that the females actually are able to reproduce. Which means for the rest of the time, they can search for food, they can raise their young, and they do all the other things that don't involve sex or don't involve being bothered about sex. Human beings don't have that. Human women are constantly sexually available. Yeah, yeah, start looking around the room. <laughs> Human women are constantly sexually available. And what that means is that we are on a constant treadmill of trying to enhance our desirability and our status. And human beings also, as well as not having estrus, we also have these huge, big, complicated brains. And what we've done is we've taken that constant... Uh, availability, that constant watching for mates, that constant judgment of ourselves and our other and others in terms of a status hierarchy, and we've turned that into social status. Because human beings with our big brains judge each other on our status, on our sexual desirability, and it has become an incredible part of our culture. The way that we work it through is in our social status. And social status matters. Social status comes from sex, and social status affects huge amounts of your behavior. It also affects other things. A study on British civil servants, servants, we have a lot of civil servants in the UK, has shown that those with high social status not only are more likely to have a desirable mate, they are also more likely to earn more during their lifetime. They have greater health, and they actually live longer than their colleagues who have lower social status. We have managed to build status deeply into our societies and into how we judge each other. And you might be thinking, yeah, but I'm in love. My mum and dad are here. They're in love. Maybe they no longer care about social status. They've stepped off the treadmill of sex. That's not actually the case. 
all throughout our lives. This is such a part of our cultural conditioning that we're constantly judging each other on the hierarchy of status. And that hierarchy of status is affecting a lot of our behaviors. It's particularly affecting what we buy. We picked the car that looks most like a penis extension that I could find. <laughs> Nobody buys an Alfa Romeo in order to be smarter. <laughs> Nobody gets a boob job in order to be a better parent. Huge amounts of our consumption behaviors are based on trying to affect our level and status hierarchy. And in fact, this has an impact on how others see us and how we see ourselves. It isn't just about what's going on up here in your mind. When a man gets into a fast red sports car, if you take a sample of his blood beforehand, and if you take a sample of his blood after he's driven that car, his testosterone will have gone up measurably. This is our endocrine system. Our need for status and our need for status symbols is built into our endocrine system. And this is incredibly important for what's going on in our planet. Because in capitalist societies, we organize our status and our sex status through stuff, through what we earn and what we own. Now, there are other ways to organize your sexual status. You can organize it by a caste system or a class system. You can organize it by feudalism or by theocracies where powerful people tell you who can mate with whom. In capitalism, the basis of capitalism is that it requires capital to buy the status symbols that affect your status in society. And in fact, that's a very natural way of doing so. Charles Darwin identified it first. It's called honest signaling. A peacock's feathers, beautiful as they are, are incredible waste. They're a waste of resources. It takes a huge amount of calories to grow those beautiful feathers in order to attract the rather dull, brown, little female peacocks. <laughs> they make you easy to catch, you know, easy for a predator to catch. And they make it very difficult to move around. The purpose of a peacock's feathers is that they're wasteful. Imagine how great that peacock must be at avoiding predators and at finding food. What an excellent fit mate this peacock must be in order to be able to waste. Conspicuous consumption in human beings and in animals is supposed to be wasteful. In the natural world, it is very, very difficult to waste, which is why the most wasteful animals able to do this are the best possible mates in terms of sexual signaling. In fact, it's a reasonably fair system for human beings as well. Sex and status equals consumption. And consumption raises your sexual desirability and your status. All good, apart from the fact that it's totally screwed. And it's totally screwed because there is not enough stuff to continue to fuel this system. You guys that know this, you have heard this before, that there is not enough resources on our planet in order to manufacture status symbols whose purpose is wastefulness. And there's not enough stuff for us to continue to do it in our capitalist societies. There sure isn't enough stuff for the rest of the world, for the emerging middle classes in places such as India and China to do so. It's a Ponzi scheme. We cannot continue to consume the stuff that we consume, and we have sold the idea of organizing your society on the basis of consumption of stuff to elsewhere in the world, and they are never going to get to get on this hamster wheel with us. The Royal Society, alumni including Marie Curie, Einstein, Stephen Hawking, the Royal Society has actually done an estimation of how much resources it would take to sustain nine billion human beings, there'll be nine billion human beings in 2050 on our planet. And actually we have enough. On our one planet, there is enough stuff, there is enough 
core resources, fish stocks, timber, potash, in order to feed and house and clothe nine billion people. It's okay. There is enough stuff. Unless those nine billion people want to consume status symbols like you and I do. And if they want to consume those status symbols like you and I do, we're going to need two more planets. We don't have two more planets. So, we've built it into our society that what you own and what you earn is the basis of status. And this is incredibly embarrassing for me to say because I'm a hardcore environmentalist, but I bought a new pair of shoes to make this speech today. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> We're all part of it. It's a pick-me-up. It's a way of saying something to the rest of the world. We're all deep into this. And it's unsustainable. So what are we going to do? Resource crash, mass wars of resources, maybe slipping back to less fair ways of organizing status, maybe slipping back to those caste systems, class systems, feudalism, because we'll still have to organize who gets to meet with who. And we'll still need status. Unless we can think of another way. Now. Traditional environmentalists have another way. The traditional environmentalists will say, stop caring about consumption. Give up your worries about status. Step off that treadmill of constantly needing to own and earn in order to display your status. The problem with that is that they think that you're buying stuff and you're not, you're buying status. And so when an environmentalist tells you to stop buying stuff, to stop wanting stuff, they're actually telling you to stop wanting sex. Because whilst we organize our society based on the fact that what you own and what you earn gives you greater mating rights, gives you more status, makes you live longer, we're not going to give it up. So we ha that's the only plan that's currently being put out there. And I would like to think that there is another one. I'd like to think that it's possible for us to replace our liberal capitalist democracy, the key word there being capitalist, I should put the question mark beside that rather than by, beside democracy, that the key that we are able to replace a system based on the consumption of stuff with a system based on something else. And what could that be? You know that really annoying thing where people take photographs of their food in order to post them on Instagram? <laughs> where teenagers sit there staring at their phone rather than talking at each other. At that incredibly annoying yet addictive word of social media that all of us, that you've already told me that you're part of. What if that could actually save the world? Think about that. What if we could replace status through stuff with status online. We still need status. We still need the red and tooth and claw competition for mates hierarchy. It's part of who we are. But what if we could provide that virtually rather than tangibly? Now, I call this a liberal communications democracy which is where the basis of our economy is on the accumulation of virtual status, of likes, of followers, of pins, and all of the more status symbols that are beginning to be developed online. Now, there's some indications that a liberal communications democracy could be fairer. Jonah Berger, a, a professor, has done research that finds that you are more likely to be retweeted if your tweet is happy that you are more likely to go viral if you are amusing, funny, or controversial. That authentic human experience is more likely to gain you social status online than just posting pictures of your shoes. Now, I'm over 30. My deep programming on social status was laid down in puberty, and it's going to be difficult for me to actually judge on any other basis. But we have a whole generation, a huge generation, who are coming to age now who are not going to be able to judge status on stuff, 
because there isn't enough stuff, and who could begin to judge status on creativity, responsiveness, controversy, sexiness, silliness, authentic human experience. And by the way, we are more likely to share these things, and by, on social media, that's what gets you status. You get, social on so, you get status on social media by others thinking that what you've done is shareable. And we're more likely to share something that amuses us than something of posting a picture of your new car, your new house, your new goods. This is a possible world. It's a tiny idea. There's some indications that that new world is coming. If you were a preteen, if you were a 12 or 13 year old in the USA right now, about 20% of preteens in the USA think that they might not get a driver's license. This is freaking a lot of people out. America is a car culture. In fact, there's been a 10% drop in teenagers getting driving licenses in the US. It's a country where turning 16 meant that you used to be able to start driver's ed. Massive shift. And very scary for the car companies, those big polluting, uh, climate change causing car companies. And the reason for this is, is that a car used to be the icon of freedom. It used to be how I got to meet my friends, how I got to entertainment, how I reached experience. Now it's a prison in which you are not allowed to tweet whilst driving. <laughs> Our phones have become the ultimate car. You can get to your friends, you can get to a wider group of friends than you'd ever be able to reach by just driving in geography. You can get to entertainment, to a touch of a button, far wider than what your local cinema might be able to provide. And all without having to get a license to do so. There's some, ind some indications that social status and anxiety of your social status online, caring desperately about your followers, your tweets, might actually be beginning to replace us caring about what we own and what we earn. And this is my best friend. Oh. <laughs> it's my best friend with her tablet. She's four years old, she's called Grace, and she's my niece. And in 2050, she will be exactly the same age that I am now. And by 2050, we have to have made a transition by which she is not judging her success, the success of others, where status does not mean stuff to Grace. Because otherwise, we are, Grace will inherit a much more dangerous world. So by the time that Grace is my age, we have to have made a transition to a different way of judging our status. So when you see that 14-year-old on their phone, at home rather than out in the mall. Hooray, they're an eco-hero. <laughs> when you care more about your Facebook status, more about your online status than about your shoes, you are helping to save the world. And when you need a pick-me-up, when you need to feel better in the eyes of others, go online. It will be better for your status. It might be better for your sex life. Controversial and you will be saving the world. Thank you very much.